The traditional medical view on obesity is summed up nearly a century ago. All obese persons are alike in one fundamental respect. They literally overeat. While this may be true in a technical sense, this is in reference to overeating calories, not food. Our primitive urge to overindulge is selective. People don't tend to lust for lettuce. We have a natural inborn preference for sweet, starchy, fatty foods, because that's where the calories are concentrated. Think about hunting and gathering efficiency. Uh, we used to have to work hard for our food. Prehistorically, it doesn't make sense to spend all day collecting types of food that on average don't provide at least a day's worth of calories. Right? You would have been better off staying back in the cave. Right? So we evolved to crave foods with the biggest caloric bang for their buck. If we were able to steadily forge a pound of food an hour, and it had 250 calories per pound, it might take you, you know, 10 hours just to break even on your calories for the day. But if you were gathering something with 500 calories a pound, you could be done in five hours and spend the next five practicing your wall paintings. So the greater the energy density, the more calories per pound, the more efficient the foraging. So we developed an acute ability to discriminate foods based on calorie density and to instinctively desire the densest. If you study the fruit and vegetable consumption of four-year-old children, they're liking correlates with calorie density. They prefer bananas over berries, carrots over cucumbers. Well, I mean, duh, isn't that just a preference for sweetness? No, they also prefer potatoes over peaches and green beans over melon, just like you know, monkeys prefer avocados over bananas. We appear to have this inborn drive to maximize calories per mouthful. All the foods that researchers tested were naturally less than 500 calories per pound. Uh, bananas topped the chart at about 400. Uh, something funny happens when you start mm, going over that. We lose our ability to differentiate. Over the natural range of calorie densities, we have this uncanny aptitude to pick out the subtle distinctions. However, once you start heading towards you know, bacon, cheese, and chocolate territory, which can reach you know, thousands of calories per pound, our perceptions become relatively numb to the differences. No wonder, since these foods were unknown to our prehistoric brains. It's like the dodo bird failing to evolve a fear response because they had no natural predators, and we all know how that turned out. Or sea turtle hatchlings crawling in the wrong direction towards artificial light rather than the moon, aberrant behavior explained by an evolutionary mismatch. The food industry exploits our innate biological vulnerabilities by stripping crops down into almost pure calories, straight sugar, oil, which is pretty much pure fat, and white flour, which is mostly refined starch. Right? First, they have to remove the fiber, because it effectively has zero calories. Right? Run brown rice through a mill to make white, and you lose about two-thirds of the fiber turn whole wheat flour into white and lose 75%. Or you can run crops through animals to make meat, eggs, and dairy, and remove 100% of the fiber. Right? And what you're left with is CRAP, uh, an acronym used by one of my favorite dietitians, Jeff Novick. Calorie-rich and processed food. Calories are condensed in the same way plants are turned into addictive drugs like opiates and cocaine. Concentration, crystallization, distillation, and extraction. They even appear to activate the same reward pathways in the brain. Put people with food addiction in an MRI scanner, show them a picture of a chocolate milkshake, and the areas that light up in their brains are the same as when cocaine addicts are shown a video on crack smoking. Food addiction is a misnomer. People don't suffer out of control eating behaviors to food in general, right? We don't tend to compulsively crave carrots, right? Milkshakes are packed with sugar and fat, two of the signals to our brains of calorie density. When people are asked to rate different foods in terms of cravings and loss of control, most incriminated was a load of crap, highly processed foods like donuts, along with cheese and meat. Those least related to problematic eating behaviors, fruits and vegetables. Right? Calorie density may be the reason people don't get up in the middle of the night and binge on broccoli. 
Animals don't tend to get fat when they're eating the foods they were designed to eat. Now, there, there is a confirmed report of free-living primates becoming obese, but that was a troop of baboons who evidently stumbled across some dumpsters at a tourist lodge. The garbage-feeding animals weighed 50% more than their wild-feeding counterparts. Sadly, we can suffer the same mismatched fate and become obese eating garbage too. For millions of years, before we learned how to hunt, our biology evolved largely on leaves, roots, fruits, and nuts. Maybe it would help if we went back to our roots and cut out the crap.